Any, any more questions? Okay. Um, let's look at the next one. It says here for the year ended um, December 20th. So let's go. Just go straight to the question. What is it asking for? It's asking for what is the appropriate number of shares, right? So what is the number of shares for basic EPS, right? So basically, what does that mean? What do we have to calculate? Weighted average. Very good. All right. I erased this because all we already know this is going to be basic EPS, right? Okay. So number one, weighted average, common stuff, outstanding. Okay?
income was 250, tax rate is 40%. Okay. So the first thing we have to do here is calculate weighted average common stock outstanding, right? times what? 3 over 12, right? So that gives us 3 million. Right? So then that gives us 53 million, right? Okay. Okay. Alright, so then what is our basic EPS? shares, are we only really like calculating them for when we have the stock options? Yes. Because I notice that they're usually given. If, for that yes. Reason. Oh yeah, they have, yes, exactly. The only thing that has to be calculated is the stock options because we have 
able to use the treasury stock method. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Did you pay 4.72 for the rounding, or is it just a little bit? I think it can't be. I don't know. I, I, that's what I got. It can't be more 72. No, like you were saying, like, what if it was 4.80? Um, that's not rounding. That's like way off, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so what does this mean? It's What's 480? What does this mean? It's anti dilutive, so we don't include it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, if we don't include it, then your basic EPS equals your diluted EPS. Okay? Alright? Because we're only looking for dilution. Okay? So you can actually see companies where their basic EPS is the same as like their diluted EPS because they either they don't have convertible securities or their securities were anti-dilutive, right? Okay? Alright, so again, whenever you ask to do diluted EPS, you have to first calculate basic EPS. Okay, because you only want dilution. If it goes up, then your answer would be the same as basic. Right? So you notice there's a 472 there, right? Okay? Yes? And we still did a test where we divide each part to make sure it's diluted. Yeah, so this one wasn't bad because you only had one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. another one. The stock option wasn't diluted. Anymore. No, no, stock options, if this is the case, it's always going to be diluted. So the only one you have to check is this. These are, uh, these are the only two you have to check because what? There's a adjustment to the numerator and the denominator, right? For these other ones, the only is the denominator. So if the denominator is bigger, it's always going to be diluted, right? Yeah? Okay? Yeah. So these are the only two you have to check for anti-dilution. Because for stock options, if this is not met, if the exercise price is greater than average, it's already anti-dilutive between it's not even in the top. Yeah. All right? All right? Yeah? Oh, yeah, that's what diluted means. Right? Diluted means it's, what is the potential dilution? Or what is the potential of our earnings per share to go down? Okay. What if it's an anti-dilutive? Uh, it's a 
would be. There would be. That would be. No one know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yes. Good. That's what I said. All right. Next one. Um, it says here, executive stock options are outstanding all year that permit executives to buy 12 billion common shares at $50. Okay? So that's the exercise price, correct? Exercise price is $50, right? The average market price is what? 60, right? So it's diluted, right? Then, what do we have to do here? Calculate the For the stock options, okay. so if, okay, let me just, okay, let me, let's just, let's just do this for now, okay. <coughs> so how many options do they have here? We have 12 million shares. Exercise price is 50. Average market price is 50, right? Okay. So what is that basically the incremental share? Incremental. Right. So here you have 12 million times the exercise price of 50 gives you what? 600 million. Right? So you have to divide that by your average market price of what? 60, so you get what? 10 million, right? You have 12 million stock options. So the 2 million then is going to be what? Your incremental shift, right? Yes? So that's your answer. 2 million. Fifty thousand shares. 
but times 6 over 12 gives us 25, right? So this gives us 320, right? So if we were calculating basic EPS, this is what this is what we would have to do, right? But we want diluted EPS, so now we have stock options, right? So we have to now um, calculate what is the incremental shares for these stock options, right? So here then is here. So for the stock options, you had 40,000. Exercise price was 15, so that gives you six, 600,000, okay? Average market price was what? 20 bucks, <coughs> so that gives you 30,000, right? So this is 40,000 here, so then 40,000. So what is the incremental shares? 10,000, right? So this 10,000 we have to add here. So this gives us 335. Okay. <coughs> right. Question. So basic EPS, what we're really concerned about is what? Weighted average common stock outstanding, right? So it says here on December 31, they had 200 million shares of common stock and 3 million shares of 9% $100 par cumulative preferred stock. So we already know cumulative preferred stock, we have to subtract the preferred stock dividend, right? Ding, 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 we have to subtract the preferred stock dividend. On March 1st, Spartan purchased 24 million of its common share with treasury stock. 5% stock dip on July 1st, 4 million treasury stock sold on October 1. And net income is 150 million, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate then our weighted average common stock. So 
on one one, we had 200 million times 12 over 12 gives us 200 million. Right? Three one, we bought that 24 million shares times, so that's a minus, right? Mm -hmm. Times 10 over 12 gives us minus 20. On 7 1, you have a 5% stock dip. So you go back and you have to multiply this 1.05, 1.05, right? So then you get 210 million minus 21 million. Okay? On 10 1, they reissued 4 million shares. So times um, 3 over 12. So that gives us 1 million, right? Okay, so we just, we read the first paragraph, right? So let's read the second paragraph. It says here you have 63 million of convertible bonds bonds convertible into 6 million shares um, issued face value um, in 2012. The bonds were converted into common stock on November 1. So what happened here? The bonds now became common stock when? On November 1st, right? So that has to become now part of our weighted average common stock extent, right? So we have to, on 11 1, the bonds were converted, and what was the conversion here? Six million. Six million, right? So, so it would be the six million times what? November, December. So two over 12, right? So that would give us what? One million, yeah? Sit on that side of Ricardo. Of Ricardo's, you know. Sorry. Um, okay. What else? Let's read the third paragraph. They also had stock options, and the very last line it says what? The options were exercised on September 1, 2016, right? So on, the, on September 1, the options now became stock, correct? Mm -hmm. And how many options did they have? 30. 30 million, right? So these 30 million now became options. So that's what? September, October, so 4 over 12, right? So that gives us what? Right? And that's it. So now we can add it all up, right? So this should give us 201 million. Okay? So for our basic EPS, this would be two. Seven million, right? Okay. So 
so what is our basic UPS? Basic then it's going to be what? The 150 minus the 27 million divided by 201 million, so that gives us what? $0.61, cent, correct? Yeah? Well, let me just expand this up. So this is going to be what? One twenty three million. yeah? Divided by 201 million gives us 0.61. Barclay purchased 12 million shares of its common stock as treasury stock. 